And uh, we're here with David Parsons, the CMO of CSC. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good to and, be here. Uh, uh, how you feeling? You feeling tired yet? What's your what's your vibe here? Uh, en energy is good. It's first day. <laughs> We're going until eight o'clock tonight, so we'll be really excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first question I have for you is: what 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 do you think of the show? Jeremy Burton, who's the CMO of EMC, first show, hundred percent owned by Jeremy. A lot of flair here. A lot of sizzle. Yeah. No, EMC does a great job uh, with these kind of events. It's very hard when you mix the combination of technical uh, community with the, with the line of business and the sea level and, and they do a good job of balancing the strategic relevance of the technology with the interest of the technologists that have to implement. So Dave, we were talking off camera, you've been in the business for a while, you were at Compaq, HP, we were talking about the integration, you went through a lot of interesting services transformations. What's, um, what's different about today? I mean, you, the services industry has always done a good job of picking up on the latest trends, whether it was client server, or you know, of course now the cloud, and now we're seeing big data. What's, what's changing in the whole service provider market? Well, well for us, it's the, it's the whole capital intensity, intensity of the business. You know, CSC's largely been in outsourcing, I've been a consulting SI company, uh, and we have a big focus in, in the public sector area. And so, so for us, the big change is the shift in the delivery models, and, and the appetite of clients to move uh, you know, assets off their books, and to do everything as a service. So when you look at the OPEX orientation, and now the opportunity with these new cloud delivery models, enabled by the new technology platforms, uh, it, it changes the whole game for us. So, so for us as a company, uh, Pat uh, talked about disruption today. Uh, Joe talked about disruption and talked about the opportunity. This is a massive opportunity for us to, to really help change the game for our clients, and really you'll fundamentally change our business model. So. So specifically, how are you working with, with EMC? What's that relationship like, and, and what's your go-to-market there? Well, it, it, the relationship is very deep, and it really builds on the whole VCE coalition. And you look at the three components, VMware, uh, Cisco, EMC. Well, sometimes we call it VICE. We throw in Vice. Intel in there. John, John calls it VICE <laughs> and Intel. Yeah, well, they're moving to the acronym where it's you know, not the, the letters of the companies. Um, but I mean, you know, the trust, the trust yeah. factor in the cloud is big. I mean, we were seeing two schools colliding here, and one of the things that we've been talking editorially out to our, our audiences, Dave and I, has been, you have an innovation sandbox with software, Hadoop, and other application frameworks growing and, and nurturing, and then you get the big production companies needing to run their business. With the OpEx is attractive on the cloud. So it's, and then all of a sudden you got Amazon failing, PlayStation Network was hacked. So there's issues kind of coming together. So how do you guys view that next step? And obviously the clients won't want to go there. Right. Well, it's funny, we were at an EMC advisory panel about two months ago, and the topic of Amazon came up. And you know, we embrace that. They're basically have seeded a whole market. Right, uh, of folks that have come in with test and dev type applications and other workloads to really experiment you know, with this whole delivery model. Uh, the point that you made around the, the security breach, uh, you know, it just creates, I think, and heightens the awareness. I don't think it's going to stop or prevent the adoption. We may see some temporary caution, but for us it creates an opportunity to really put the trust in the cloud. And this is where, you know, as Pat and Joe talked about today, this whole notion of a trusted cloud security, availability, the ability to ensure that these workloads can move across public, private, hybrid domains. Uh, it's really the foundation of, of what we've done as a company through the old outsourcing model. So what we're simply trying to do now is take our experience, and the lessons learned from 20, 30 years of outsourcing experience, and apply that to these new delivery models using these new commercial It's really relevant right now. I mean, it's, it's probably the most relevant skill set outside of data scientists. Data science is a little bit trendy, uh, but for the most part, your, your core competency in outsourcing is all about OpEx reduction. It is. Right? So now you have that OpEx reduction as a standard operating procedure for companies. So yeah. how does that change an organization's culture, their processes? Obviously, they want to get consumer environments out there, the consumerization of IT. So how does all this change with the cloud really change the companies, and what are their challenges? Well, what, what we focused on primarily is this notion of workloads uh, and, and identifying those applications that would be best suited for this kind of delivery model. And it's quite frankly, you know, there's, there's got to be a strategy, there's got to be a set of roadmaps and a set of priorities and criteria. 
And so we've got a whole consulting side of the business that, that is basically building services where we can go in and advise a client and kind of work through and walk through various workloads that are cloud ready, if you will. And we've created tools, that actually a tool that we're debuting at this event, which is a simple biz calculator that allows companies to do self-assessments on those workloads that are ready to move. Uh, the rest of the journey is really about taking those applications, and as you may have heard, we just announced a new SAP infrastructure utility. Uh, SAP, Oracle have huge workloads out there on, on premise. And so for us, it's simply a matter of identifying workloads that are ready to move, building the services, and then you know, working with clients to pilot and then uh, put in production. So what are, you, what are you seeing there as far as, so take SAP and Oracle, actually kind of two different approaches, right? Oracle sort of dragging its feet when people want to go to v VMware, let's say specifically. SAP maybe a little bit more forthcoming. What are you seeing out there as far as people actually taking mission critical applications and putting them into the cloud? Isn't that kind of risky? Well, you know, there's risk if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, we, we, we took the first move. Uh, we, we announced just today, actually, that we uh, were the first pilot, first to pilot, proof of concept, our own SAP uh, benefits module, which is an HP uh, or an HR module within SAP. Uh, and we've been working with the VCE community and EMC to, to move the benefits registration application, which is a great cloud type workload. Uh, it's where, whereas at the beginning of every fiscal year, there's the benefit enrollment period, and you, you get a huge spike in demand. And so that, that had a great uh, set of characteristics to it, and we just finished a proof of concept. And, and what it really proved out is that from a resource utilization perspective, we were able to move the application over to this environment, and in the proof of concept, it used 60% less compute resource. And you translate that into cost and performance and scale and availability, we're using our own internal workload experience, and then we're working with you know, thousands of SAP clients. We have a huge SAP practice. And so we're taking our experiences, the experiences we have working with clients, and, and this new ACE factory that we just launched, which is a, basically an automated factory for, for transforming workloads into the cloud for delivery purposes. And we're taking all three of those elements and, and really bringing that to the client to help reduce the risk uh, and to really enable and accelerate the adoption of cloud. Yeah, SAP is, um, as I said, I think very forthcoming about wanting to virtualize applications and supporting that. We're going to be at, at Oracle, I mean, sorry, at SAP Sapphire next week, John. And, uh, Oracle? Yeah, uh, we'll be at Oracle Open World too. Sometimes we call it Oracle Closed World. But, uh, but, uh, that's, that won't be until the summer. I don't think, but, we're, going um, be, I don't think we're going to be invited but, there. Again. But so Dave, well, you talked about the utilization improvements, the reduction in, 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 in CapEx and OpEx. Why was that? Was it just because you're putting in a, this single logical block of infrastructure and it's just easier to manage, easier to, to, to keep up to date with all the stuff that you have to, to, to manage? Or is it, is it a different business model? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it, it's a different business model. I mean, if you look at the old outsourcing model for, for years, no matter who the player was, it was a your mess for less kind of deal, right? If, IT, if the IT infrastructure was a dollar, uh, the outsource opportunity was to charge 80 cents and figure out how to reduce the cost to make margin over time. Right? That was the, the operating model. Uh, in the new world, you know, clients want to know. Uh, they, they don't want monolithic homogeneous. They want to be able to break these things down modularly by workload, by function, by department, by division. Uh, and so they're demanding now that uh, the capital risk be minimized. And, and for us, from a service pro provider perspective, uh, it's, the burden's on us to, to bring that value to the client. And, and this is all now enabled by these new technology platforms, both on the application side and then in the infrastructure. So VC is like the perfect partner for you, isn't it? Because they're really a technology supplier. They're not a services company. Um, uh, and so, I mean, neither is Cisco, VMware, EMC. They're, they're not services companies. They come right out and say that. You are um, and have a deep history there. So it makes a, a good partnership. I'm wondering, as the CMO, you own the brand, presumably, of the CSC brand. What, what do you want it to stand for, and how is, or if, if it's changing, how is it changing? Well, again, CSC has always prided itself on getting it done. We, we, we've always delivered. And if you survey our clients, the thing you'll hear you know, from Asia to Australia to the U.S. is that CSC delivers. If we make a commitment, we follow through. Uh, what we're really looking at now, when you look at the portfolio of the company, a large government business, about 30% of the business, 
and the other two thirds are, are commercial orientation, is, is really this whole notion of really being a leader in delivering business solutions, uh, largely through our vertical lines of business. So we have focus in five or six industry verticals, financial services, healthcare, manufacturing, chemical energy, natural resources, and public sector. And then this whole notion uh, and focus in the company on delivering technology-enabled business solutions. And so across the service delivery continuum of assess, plan, build, so think technology consulting, business consulting, and then the new world of managed services. We, we want to be a, an early and first mover uh, in this new world order. It's highly disruptive to the business model, but we believe that, that bringing this innovation to our clients, you know, being first there, particularly given the fact that we know their environments, both applications and infrastructure. And if you look at CSC, we're, we're very uniquely positioned in the industry as a provider in terms of understanding both the application layer and the corresponding impact in relationship to infrastructure. And in the cloud area, you got to know both to have the most impact. And, and so really, we're placing a big bet uh, in, in really leading out in this new world order. You this, mentioned track record. Um, in this market, with you know, again, the top news again, Dave, looking at the logs, PlayStation Network still down. People are like all over that content. Track record matters, and this is really an interesting point because there is movement to the cloud. This hybrid cloud is irrelevant. Um, track record matters. Can you expand from? Uh, and that's a good point. You guys have, have a good brand on delivery, being to, able to deliver. But track record matters. Talk about some of the things that people need to know about around you, what you guys have done and your track record because. You know, this SLA kind of vapor that's out in the cloud right. is elusive for a lot of companies don't have a lot of uh, right. delivery capabilities. There's a lot of cloud washing out there, or as cloud washing essentially, that people say they're cloud, but they're not. Can you talk about that track record sure. and, and what makes that CSC formula work and how does that fit in the cloud and big data? Right, but one of the things people don't know about CSC is that within the $16 billion company, we've got a $2 billion software business. So, so one, view of the Rubik's Cube, if you will, is we've got a, an SAP within the company where, where we have the business model is largely software license and maintenance. And these are vertical applications, predominantly in the financial services and the healthcare industry. So with that insight, you know, think, think of, a, of an SAP and Oracle business model, we're, we're actually transforming those businesses. The leaders of those businesses are trying to figure out how to deliver their business critical applications, which support mission critical processes in, 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 a, in a more effective model i.e. through cloud. So we're living the business model transformation and we're also living the experience of using our own infrastructure and our cloud strategy to, to transform these business models internally. And as we do that, as we drive this enterprise transformation, we'll share those insights with our clients, with other ISVs. Uh, and this, is, this goes back to the, again, been there, done it, doing it. Uh, we don't do it arrogantly, but, but there's a lot of rich learning that, that we're able to share with our clients. And that's really what, our, what we're doing around the cloud, around applications, software as a service, and then business process as a service. In, in those models, just the final point is, we're actually been in this business for about five years now, where we're on the BPO side, where we get paid by the outcome. So when you think about insurance claims transactions, you think about banking back office transactions, we're actually offering services to clients, mainframe based today, where forget SLAs and a quality of service, we're getting paid by the business outcome. And we think that's the future of cloud and, and everything we're doing today is to take that, that knowledge and understanding of where the market needs to go, where it wants to go, and to begin to build there you know, starting today. So, so it's, it's clearly a journey. That's a real shared risk model. It and, is. And one that actually a lot of services companies would like to go towards because this could be potentially very lucrative for you, I would imagine. Um, Talk about agility a little bit. I mean, back when you were at HP, that was the big buzzword. <laughs> um, it feels like it has more meaning today, and I know it's something that CSC has been been pushing on. What, is, what does agility mean to you, and, and how is it different from, let's say, you know, 10, 10 years ago when you were at HP? Yeah, well, you, you look at the world of agility in the context of infrastructure today, I'll just use that example, and, and the ability to provision workloads in a cloud using the notion of private-public hybrid. Uh, what, one of the things that we just did in partnership with VCE and EMC and the team is launched a private cloud uh, service that's delivered as a utility. It's built on a rate card basis, one of the first ever in the industry. And, and so what it, what it does, because our public and our private cloud strategy are built on the common infrastructure, same infrastructure fabric, same management services, same SLAs, the ability for a client 
in, in the spirit of an agile infrastructure to, to provision a workload in a, in a private, dedicated environment, and yet from a burst cloud burst perspective, to be able to move parts of that workload, either seasonally or permanently, to a public or semi-public, semi-private cloud data center, uh, either secure multi-tenant or, again, private, dedicated, uh, is something that we're able to do now. And so that, that's probably the best example of agility. So that's interesting. So you, in that example, CSC would, would own the infrastructure on its books, is that right? Correct. And, and so, and, and EMC obviously now position its infrastructure as a service. Um, are you purchasing from them on a pay-as-you-go basis, or how's that business model well, work? Well, this, this goes back to the, the partnership dynamic, right? And, and the business model change for all the players, right? So if you look at the, the three components of, of these new conversion infrastructures, and, and obviously CSC has a broad partnering portfolio. I mean, we, we work with a lot of different players and we support a lot of different platforms. Clearly, we've, we've, we've created a very strong go-to-market focus with the VCE coalition. But if you look at the software players, the licensing models have to change, right? So whether you're a Microsoft, an Oracle, an SAP, even a VMware, we're having a lot of rich discussions around licensing and, and how do you license in the new world order, particularly pay as you go. Because it can't be where the provider bears the burden of capitalizing the license cost. It just can't work that way. It's not, not cost effective. Same on the hardware side, right? There's got to be new provisioning models for providers. And so we're working hand in hand. This is part of the partnership, not only joint development, joint investment, but, but how do we innovate on the business model together? And how do we share risk together as we stand up these new services? Uh, and that's at the forefront of a lot of the, the work we're doing today with, with EMC and the VCE co Okay, so you're, you're, I'm inferring from that that you're saying EMC is being somewhat flexible or maybe very flexible in the way in which it, it, it prices to you the service provider and recognizes that there's a changing business model there, is that right? Yeah, there's clearly shared risk, there's shared reward, and for all of us, this is, uh, you know, this is the Wild West time in terms yeah, of the that, market. That and is pretty innovative, you don't hear a lot about that. I mean, you hear maybe one company doing it on their own, but you don't hear that a lot in a, in a service provider context. There's a lot of moving parts with, with VCE. They seem to have done a, a pretty good job. Um, I, I confirm that, if you would. Is, you know, how, 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 what is it like working with the sort of the three-headed monster that has the single throat to choke, and uh, what could they be doing better? Well, there's challenges, obviously, and they'd be the first to tell you that. You know, any two-way, three-way, I mean, two-way is hard enough. Uh, and I've been at the partnering uh, you know, profession for many years now. But uh, you know, there, there are challenges, but there's transparency. And the key with any relationship, as you know, is, is to have your people that you trust and respect and then a transparent dialogue. And, and we're just working through those kind of things together. Uh, the, the biggest challenge in terms of the things for improvement is we've got to go faster. <laughs> we've got to go faster. We've got to get more aligned faster. Uh, but when you're working with that many groups and that many people, uh, it, it just takes time sometimes to, to get the right kind of consensus. But uh, that's improving as well. That's good. Well, we've seen um, a, a, a massive transformation uh, of, of EMC as a company. Uh, we've seen a massive transformation in the industry with uh, HP acquiring EDS. You see Dell acquiring Pro. You know, VCE becomes a, a much more friendly to service provider company. We're talking to Dave Parsons, CMO of CSC, one of the premier uh, service providers on the planet, very, very well known for its, uh, for its outsourcing business. Um, uh, what I didn't know as well is you've got a lot of uh, software businesses in vertical markets. That was sort of new news to us. Um, but talking about the cloud, how that's changing, uh, it's a new opportunities for, for users. Um, Dave, what's your, my, my final question is, what's your advice for the user community that's going through these huge upheavals? You know, they're used to it, they've seen them before, but yet again we have another one, you know, cloud, the big data's coming down the road. What's your advice to them to, to, to sort of maximize their value and minimize their risk? Yeah. Well, for, first step is to, is to work with companies that have been there and done it uh, and, and have an experience base uh, in and around the, the fringe areas of cloud. I mean, the cloud is new to everybody, but it, it's very easy uh, in the early process to, to separate kind of the wheat from the chaff in terms of uh, talk from the walk. So that's, that's job one. I think job two is you know, the partner ecosystems that are building up around these, these uh, opportunities are key as well. And, and so, you know, working with companies and multiple companies in a partner ecosystem that are aligned to meet your objectives as a client uh, and are willing to go you know, make those commitments, share that risk, uh, is a big first uh, and important step. Uh, I think th those are the two big items. The th third item, obviously, is to make sure that your unique business needs 
are being appropriately addressed uh, in a very focused manner. Uh, and that, those are really the three that I would uh, lay out as key. All right, Dave Parsons, CMO of CSC. We're hearing about new business models today. Dave, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to have you. Thanks, Dave, appreciate it. Okay,